Hi there, welcome to this video where we will be uh, attempting the Edexcel IGCSE 2021 May uh, theory paper. Okay, so over here I have the uh, question paper. Let's get started. So over here it says a uh, family uses digital devices in their everyday lives. Okay, and over here it says Harvard buys a tablet computer, give two types of wireless connectivity that the tablet computer could use. Okay, so not a very tough one. So when it comes to tablets, guys, the types of wireless connectivity that they could use is definitely Wi-Fi is one. Okay, Wi-Fi is a type of wireless connectivity. Then we have Bluetooth. Okay, and then there are some tablets that may also support infrared. Okay, so you can also mention infrared. There are also some tablets which have SIM card support where you can insert a SIM card into it. So for those tablets, you can also mention 3G, 4G connection, or you can simply say LTE. Okay, which is long-term evolution, okay, and it is a connection to the internet, okay, but I wouldn't put this answer because this is not something that applies to all tablets. There are only certain tabs which support SIM card connectivity, so only those tabs will have uh, the LTE wireless connectivity, okay, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth are good enough, okay, right, moving on to the second question. B, over here it says, give two types of peripheral storage media. Okay, guys, this is an important word, storage media that a tablet could use. Now, in your textbook, you would have learned that there is something known as a storage device and a storage media. Okay, so when you take a pen drive, a pen drive is a storage device. The media, the storage media, the technology that is used in a pen drive is flash memory. So flash memory becomes the storage media. Okay, I hope you're clear with that. Okay. So over here, they're asking us, give two types of peripheral storage media that the tablet could use. So we shouldn't be giving the device. We should be giving only the media. So say, for example, if we are talking about a hard disk, okay? If we are talking about a hard disk that a tablet could use a hard, could use a hard disk as a storage device, the storage media of a hard disk would be, would be magnetic disk, okay? So magnetic disk is one, okay? Then say, for example, if you are talking about a memory card, okay, if you are talking about a memory card, the storage media of a memory card is flash memory, okay? So you can mention flash memory or you can mention just flash. That's also fine, but I think it will be better if you can say flash memory, okay? Uh, if you are talking about, uh, for example, certain tabs, you can connect to your Google account, you can connect to your Microsoft account. So in that case, it's using cloud storage. So in that case, the storage media will be cloud. Okay, it will be the same thing. It will be just cloud. Okay, so we have magnetic disk. We have flash memory. You can mention cloud technology. You can say cloud storage. Okay, so yeah, you can mention any of these. Right, moving on to the next one. It says which one of these is required for the tablet computer to connect to the internet. So in order to connect to the internet, it will have to be connected to an internet service provider. Okay, ISP stands for internet service provider. So internet service provider is an organization that provides individuals or companies with access to the internet. Okay, right. The next one, D, which one of these is found in all computers? So what is found in all computers over here? Our answer it cannot be control software. We do not find control software in all computers. Keyboard is not found in all computers. There are certain computers which do not have a keyboard. Operating system also no, because not all computers have an operating system. Okay, but all computers definitely need to have a processor because basically, what do what do how do computers function? Computers accept accept input process it and then output it, right? So every computer will have a processor in it. Okay, so our answer over here is going to be processor. Right, moving on to the next question. Question E, it says, which one of these would be used as a desktop replacement computer? Okay. 
So we have laptop, mainframe, media player, server. So something that can be used to replace a desktop computer. Yes, the closest would be laptop, okay? A mainframe would be too powerful. A server computer is mostly a mainframe computer. A media player is a device that is normally used to play videos or listen to audio, okay? The F question over here, it says, Describe how tablet computers allow people to work from home. So guys, they have asked you to describe. Now there are multiple points that you can think of. Okay, a tablet has Wi-Fi connectivity, so it can be used to work from home. You have to be able to describe it. A tablet is portable, so, and you have to be able to describe it. A tablet, for example, has a touch screen in it. Okay, so how it can be used. Then for example, you can talk about the fact that a tablet can run on hosted applications, can support hosted applications, and then you have to be able to explain it, okay? So you select whatever point you're comfortably describing, you can talk about well, and then go ahead with that. So I'm gonna talk about the fact that uh, tablets are, tablets can connect to Wi-Fi, for example, shall we talk about that, okay? So I can say tablet computers can, connect wireless or can connect to the internet via Wi-Fi, okay? So I have only stated my point. Now I have to go on to describe it. So using Wi-Fi, users can access the, I can access company, company files, stored on the cloud and collaboratively work with other employees, okay? Okay, so for example, if you have a tab, tab can connect to the Wi-Fi, so you can connect to the Wi-Fi, you can connect to the Wi-Fi, and then you can collaboratively work with other employees as well, okay? You can even check your email, respond to email, so this is all happening on the cloud, isn't it? Okay, so this is one, this is how I have described mine, okay? So if your answer is say, for example, that uh, tablet computers can run hosted applications, then go on to explain. It'll be great if you can give an example as well. You can say, for example, on a tablet computer, hosted applications can be run. For example, okay, Office 365, Office 365, we are basically talking about the Microsoft Office package. Okay, so Office 365 can be run on a tablet and uh, you can say it can be used as a collaboratively co collaborative working tool. Okay, go on and describe yourself. Okay, right. Next, it speaks about a CPU has 16 megabytes of cache memory. Construct an expression to show how many bits are in 16 megabytes. Okay. So as you know, guys, we are going from a big unit from maybe bytes, we are going to a small unit, okay? From a big unit, we are going to a small unit. So when we go from a big unit to a small unit, we need to multiply each time, okay? So right now we are in 16 maybe byte, 16 maybe byte. So below maybe bytes, we have KB bytes, okay? So we multiply by 1024, okay? 1024 KB bytes, okay? Then from kibibytes, the next one is bytes, okay? So again, we multiply by 1024. And then from bytes, we come down to bits, where we multiply by eight, okay? So I do hope you know how this works, okay? We do not have time in this video to explain how the binary number system works and how the decimal number system works, okay? So we go from 16 maybe bytes, 2024 kibibytes, 2024 bytes, and then we get it in bits. So how do we write our answers? We write it 16 times 1024 to the power of two times eight, okay? They have asked you only for an expression. You don't need to put the final answer over here, okay? For those who are a little confused, at least I'll give you this. So we have eight bits is equal to one byte, okay? 1024 bytes is equal to one kibibyte, okay? 1024, sorry, one, sorry, 1024 kibibytes, KIB, okay? Is equal to one maybe byte. 1024 maybe bytes 
is equal to 1 GB byte. 1024 GB byte is equal to 1 KB byte. Okay. So this is what we call the binary number system. So since we are using the binary number system, we always use 1024, 1024, 1024. Then we have something called the decimal number system. So when we use the decimal number system, we keep using 1000, 1000. Okay, and then it also changes instead of kibibyte, we say kilobyte. Instead of megabyte, we say megabyte. Okay, so that's the difference between the binary number system and the decimal number system. Okay, right. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next question then. Over here, it says Howard sells his old hard disk drive to Steve. Complete the table by ranking the storage devices in order of their read write speed. Okay, so which of these three is the fastest? Okay, so let's draw a box like this. Okay, so in terms of being the fastest, it is definitely going to be solid state drive. Solid state drive uses flash memory. So it's definitely going to be the fastest. Okay, so we put the answer C. Then second, it will be hard disk drive, okay? Hard disk drive uses magnetic uh, disk, is a ma uses magnetic disk technology. So it's the second fastest. And the slowest of them all is the CD DVD, which uses optical disk drive, okay? So we have not C, sorry, we have to put the A. Oh, oh, oh my bad, uh, B, sorry, B, okay? The next question over here, it goes as, describe two factors that affect the read-write speed of a hard disk driver, okay? So guys, over here, you need to know some of the parts of a hard disk, okay? So when it comes to the parts of a hard disk, you have something called a spindle, then you have something called the read-write arm, then you have something called platter, okay? So these are some of the essential components of a hard disk driver. And each of these components plays, you know, a role in, in in the performance of a hard disk driver, okay? So for example, if we are to talk about the platter, if we are to talk about the platter, okay, a platter is a kind of a round piece of metal, okay? So the more the platters, the more platters you have inside the hard disk drive, the more data that you can store into your hard disk. Or you can say, the more the number of platters, the higher the capacity of the hard disk, okay? So shall we put it like this? The higher the number of platters, the higher the capacity of the hard disk drive, okay? So this is one, this is one factor, okay? More platters means higher capacity. Another factor that you can talk about is something called the spindle. Okay, so a spindle is what rotates these platters, okay? The spindle is what rotates these platters, okay? And the faster the spindle rotates, the more data that can be read and written to. Is it clear now? These platters store the data now. <clears throat> now, in order for the data to be read and in order for data be, to be stored back into the platter, it has to be rotated, it has to be turned. So the spindle is what turns the platters. Is it clear? So the faster the spindle turns, the faster the platters would turn. The faster the platters turn, okay? The faster that the platters turn, the more faster data can be read and written to, okay? Now, when spindles rotate, we measure its speed in something called RPM, revolutions per minute, okay? So the higher the RPM, okay? When the RPM is high, it means the spindle is turning, is turning the platter, uh, is turning the platter more times per second, okay? So more times per second means it can read data faster and also store data with the platters faster, okay? So let's say spindle, spindle speed, okay? You can say the faster the spindle rotates, the more data, the more data that can be read slash written to the platters, okay? Okay, so the faster, and you can, and like I told you guys, spindle speed is measured in RPM, revolutions per minute. There's also one more thing which we call the read-write arm. Okay, so there is some, when the platters are spinning, you have a read-write arm on top of it. Okay, that will be reading the data from the platters. Okay, now these read-write arm, they have something called a latency. How fast do they get the data from the platter? 
How fast do they store the data to the platter? So that's another factor that I'll add up that should also be considered. What is the latency of the read write? Um, okay. How long does it take to store data or retrieve data? Okay. Right. The next one, explain one benefit to the environment of buying previously owned devices. Okay, so yes, you can think of many. Okay, so they're basically asking what one benefit of recycling devices, using devices again and again, okay, of purchasing devices that were used by somebody else in, instead of purchasing a brand new device. Okay, so uh, one thing that we can talk about is you can say uh, when devices are disposed, there is a high chance of it uh, leaking out chemicals to the environment, which can affect the soil and the animals, or animals, you can say, and the plants can affect the soil, which in turn can affect the animals and plants that depend on this soil. Okay. So guys, like I told you, many digital devices, they come with batteries, right? They come with batteries and various components. And these components sometimes have harmful chemicals inside them. So when you simply dispose a device, when you simply throw a device out, what happens is after some time, okay, the chemicals from these devices can start leaking out, can start spilling out, okay? And then what happens, it starts going into the soil. Now, once it goes into the soil, you get plants that depend on this soil, plants that grow on this soil. So those plants can be severely affected. Also, you get animals who are on the soil. Okay, animals, for example, who will be eating from the plants that grow on the soil. So they too are going to be severely affected because of these devices leaking harmful chemicals. So it's always better, instead of simply throwing the device away, it's better to sell it and get somebody else to use it. Okay, when devices are disposed, you can say incorrectly, there's a high chance. So, so by buying previously on devices, this problem can be minimized, okay? Okay, another benefit to the environment is guys, when it comes to making newer devices, okay, a lot of metal has to be extracted, precious metals have to be extracted in order to make newer devices. So if people are continuously buying newer devices, okay, what's gonna happen? the resources that are available on earth are going to be used up very fast isn't it so that's another fact that you can be mentioned that you can mention precious metals okay which have a limited supply you can say on earth are going to be used up in a shorter period of time okay uh something else that you can also talk about is that uh, we're talking about benefit to the environment right okay so we can't we cannot talk about saving uh, money and things like that okay so these two points i have mentioned okay i have mentioned these two points okay but just remember you have to explain only one benefit okay if you do explain two benefits examiner is only going to read the first one okay and not going to be looking at the second one okay Right, moving on to the last question of the first question. It says, which one of these is the type of software Howard should use to make copies of his application? Okay, so when it comes to making copies of his application, he will be using utility software, okay? So as you know, guys, utility software is a part of system software. It is a part, it's, it's system software is what controls your entire computer, okay? So utility software, is a part of system software. And when it comes to making copies of your application, it, you will be using utility software, okay? So project management is used for managing an entire project. Office productivity, you have uh, word processing, spreadsheet, presentation software, softwares like that. Mm -hmm. Control software, they are used to control, uh, what do you call, uh, they, are, they, they are used to give instructions to control devices, okay? So any of these three cannot come. The answer will be utility software, okay? Right, so we'll end this video. And in the next video, we will be moving on to question number two, okay? See you in the next video.